In this video we'll be looking at the various types of convective system and convective weather associated with them that are possible. You can see uh, there are two cumulonimbus clouds here and two cumulus clouds and what's shown is their microphysical structure so what phases of water they're made up of and there's a number of lines indicated as well. Firstly there's the convective condensation level and that forms the cloud base of the convective clouds and that's common to all. The second is the freezing level, that's the zero degrees Celsius isotherm, shown here as a straight line, and below that the clouds that consist, consist of liquid water only. Between the freezing level and about minus 15 or minus 20 degrees Celsius, the clouds are a mixture of supercooled liquid water and ice crystals. It goes beyond the scope of thermodynamics to talk about the details, but in the real atmosphere water does not freeze uh, in its entirety at zero degrees Celsius and so there is what we get m is known as mixed phased clouds so there are two phases of water supercool liquid water and ice between minus 15 and minus 20 you get efficient ice crystal production and above that you get more and more ice crystals and less and less supercool liquid water until above minus 40 degrees Celsius the cloud is entirely uh, consists entirely of ice crystals so for a thunderstorm you can see that there are various levels and in particular you can see that the equilibrium level is going to be the tropopause and you have an overshooting top. So the overshooting top is a product of the fact that for a large cape environment parcels of air have momentum to overshoot the equilibrium level which remember is also known as the level of zero buoyancy. So the overshooting parcels find themselves in a, a stable environment and collapse back down after time. The extended area above minus 40 is the siriform anvil, so it's a region that consists entirely of ice. The region between minus 15 to about minus 20 is a region of very strong rates of formation of ice crystals, and if a cloud passes through about the minus 20 level, then you're going to see electrification. That's because large ice crystals falling through smaller ice crystals produces uh, static electricity, the same thing that happens when you take your jumper off in winter or you brush your hair or whatever. So this particular thunderstorm on the left uh, passes through that minus 20 degrees Celsius isotherm and so there's electrification and lightning and, and thunderstorms of rain because there's that lightning and thunder and an overshooting top and a, a seriform anvil. The next thunderstorm show just pushes through that minus 20 degrees Celsius level and so it's still a thunderstorm, it's still a cumulonimbus but it has no anvil. Because the significant ice though it will appear as a glaciated top. The next two clouds are just cumulus clouds and the first one is a mix of liquid water below the freezing level and supercooled liquid water. And the last cloud only extends to just below the freezing level and so it's referred to as a warm cloud which means that it only consists of liquid water, there's no supercooled liquid water. Now again for reasons that go beyond the scope of the course, the greater the depth of cloud the more likely it is that you're going to get showers of rain and so if there's if you only have a warm cloud, that is there's no ice phase whatsoever, it's not nearly as certain that a shower will occur. Uh, whereas if you have a, a cumulus cloud that extends through the freezing level then it's more likely that you're going to get um, precipitation out of that. What we can also see really if you move right to left is a sequence of development too. So every cumulonimbus cloud starts off as a shallow cube which builds into a towering cumulus cloud which is what the, the second clouds referred to and then a, a, Q, a CB with a, a glaciated top and then finally if it gets deep enough um, that with an overshooting top and a seriform anvil. So here's a first example it's from Sydney and you can see that the um, the maximum temperature is 25 degrees Celsius and there's a surface dew point of 21 and that gives the resultant saturated adiabat for cloud parcels there's a surface lifted index of minus 5 so there's a 5 degrees Celsius difference at 500 hectopascals between the um, parcels of air in the updraft and those in the environment and that gives a cape of about 1500 joules per kilogram which is quite reasonable and a convective inhibition of zero joules per kilogram so this trace will convect for those values of temperature and dew point. 
So what kind of weather is possible? Pause the video and have a look at the trace. So what did you get? Well, we can see that the minus 20 degrees Celsius isotherm does cut through uh, this profile towards the top of the cloud. So it is quite possible that we will get electrification and a thunderstorm is possible for this trace. Here's Williamtown and for 29 degrees Celsius and a dew point of 23 degrees you can see there's definitely uh, a convective condensation level. The surface lifting index is minus 8 and the cape is nearly 3000 joules per kilogram. And so we can say quite confidently that the thunderstorm is very very likely for this environment and we might be worrying about things like strong winds at the surface and large hail because of the amount of cape providing a strong updraft to support hail. You can see of course too that minus 20 degrees Celsius passes through this trace uh, as well. A final example uh, here from Perth. Is this convecting? Well you can work out a convective condensation level but where's the equilibrium level? About a thousand feet above that. So this is also a convective environment but because the convection is going to be capped by a strong inversion this will be stratocumulus which forms by the spreading out of a cumulus cloud. So convective environments come in all varieties some producing thunderstorms, some only showers and in this case probably just some stratocumulus cloud and no precipitation.